I got to tell you a funny story. I forgot to tell you this at the top of the show. So it was like really nice outside yesterday. So I figured, you know, I got to, you know, I had the flu for like a month. I said, I got to start exercising again. So I got on my bike. In the house or your outside no, no, bike? No, my outside bike. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How do I know? I don't know. I don't have an inside bike. <laughs> so, uh. So you said, oh, it's nice outside. Let me get on my stationary bike. No, I don't think I'd say it's nice outside and then get on a stationary bike. <laughs> Unless the stationary bike was outside. <laughs> so it was nice outside. I figured, well, okay, I'll go for a bike ride for like 20 minutes or so. You know, start getting back into exercising. So I got this, like, mountain bike. Mm -hmm. So what I do is, like, sort of near my house, there's uh, places you can go off, off the road and onto dirt oh. and trails and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I usually do that. Because I don't like to ride on the road. First of all, it's just boring and... You know, I you think you got to dodge traffic. Yeah, and it's just better exercise to, I think, to be on the dirt like a man. Don't you also think that people in cars aim at bikes? I know I do. So <laughs> I got to figure. No, I, I told you one, last summer I was riding my bike in the, in, on the road, and this 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 three punks pull up alongside me and almost hit me, mm. and they start yelling at me. At me, they're in the car and they start yelling at me. So I still, I just, you know, for once in my life, I wasn't a pussy. I just went and I just started screaming at the guy, "F you, F oh, yeah. you, F you." <laughs> so then all of a sudden he he peels out. Three guys. Then they come to a light and they see me chugging along, trying to ride my bike, and I said, "Hey, you pussy! Why don't you wait over there? Wait till I get there." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And then they wait, and then they wait, and I'm like, "Oh my god! What am I doing? I'm alone. It's three guys in a beat up old car. You know they can take you. They're gonna kick my ass." <laughs> So I got up there, and the guy started yelling at me, and I yelled back at him, and then he took off. So mm. he didn't get out of the car, thank God. I guess I put up a good enough front like I looked yeah. like. Scared him. And meanwhile, I looked like Poindexter. <laughs> I was going to say, you yeah. better know Kung Fu or something. Yeah, I mean, I look like the class geek. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so I went bike riding yesterday, and, I, and I'm riding stuff, and I I get off road, you know, with my mountain bike. Yes, go up into the trails. Yeah, I was in some trails, you know, nothing, nothing heavy. And then... Uh, like horse trails. <laughs> and then I'm like going and stuff. All of a sudden, I'm like turning a corner. And I see in a pile of leaves, like a guy laying in the pile of leaves. Like a body? I see the legs and the shirt. And I, like, I'm like, oh my God, I think there's a, so I stopped my bike. And must have been about 20 feet from me. Uh -huh. And I could see it. Like could, Some of the bushes were obscuring. So all I could see is like the end of his legs and his feet. And he's laying still. You see feet? I didn't see the feet. I saw the legs. Uh -huh. I couldn't see the feet. I saw uh -huh. the legs, like the blue jeans and the red sweatshirt. Uh -huh. And I'm like, uh-oh. Because now I'm thinking, okay, if I go, let's say it's somebody dead or it's somebody dying. If I go over there, that's cool. I'll help him. But let's say it's... Someone who is waiting, like a homeless dude looking to kill somebody. So I'm getting all weirded out because I'm alone in the woods. There's nobody around. I mean, I'm so up I'm in the woods. I'm wondering if you get close, what are you going to do? I mean, you're not right. Going to I didn't have any weapons. Yeah, right. I didn't have anything. So, what do you think I did? I, hey, I'm a hero today. Hey, what do you think I did? Uh, you win and left. Of course, she knows me better than anyone. I get on my bike and like, like you know, remember like the Three Stooges? I was like, whoop, 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 whoop. You start riding extra fast. I'm like, feet don't fail me now. I'm getting out of here. If this guy's dead or he's dying, I don't care. It could be some mass murderer in there. I get on my bike and I start. I mean, the wheels are spinning. You can't and see I, the wheels anymore. And guess what happens? What? I blow a flat. Oh. Wait a second, my back tire oh. blows out. Oh no! Now I'm in the dirt. And I'm like, I'm spit. I go, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then I start to hear noise back there. I heard like, I, uh, not from where the guy was, but like maybe like an animal or something. So I just, I said, right on the rim, man. I start going because I was far away from my house. And I'm riding on the rim. And uh, I didn't care. I'm getting out of there. So I, I take off and, uh, and I start going. I can see this. So I'm going home and stuff, and I'm riding home, and I go, holy cow, what if it was somebody in trouble and they needed help? Or worse, what if somebody had been freshly murdered? Now, my bike tracks are there, and I think like, so, like maybe some people saw me coming out of the woods, 
Maybe they're going to think I killed the but guy. But that's better that you don't go and touch him, because at least none of your fibers right. and DNA is on the guy. Yeah, but what if they put the blanket on him and the <laughs> glove gets on there? Because I did with the glove and, the, you know. OJ will walk and I'll fry. Do you understand? That's my luck in life. Yeah, you know. Okay, all right. So you now you understand it. what's going through my head. Sure. So I'm like flipping out, and I come home, and I just said, you know what? I'm not gonna say anything to anyone because everyone's gonna think I'm a real skunk for leaving. <laughs> I'm just gonna get it. I'm just gonna go home, relax, and just forget about this because probably didn't even make a phone call. Well, you, what are you in a rush again? Oh, I'm so wait a second. Disgusting. So I'm standing there, and I, you know, I get it, and I go, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut because probably was nothing. Who even knows if it was a person? It was probably like it was probably just some <laughs> leaves. An optical illusion. Yeah, but it was just probably some like maybe someone threw some clothes or so. I don't know what it is. It wasn't a guy. I'm just going to go home, relax, and not even think about it again. And then if I read in, exercising again. And if I read in the paper that get, there's a dead guy there or someone was killed back there, I was, I was smart. I don't want to get killed. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so I, as soon as I get in the house, I see the housekeeper. And this is me. Again, I don't know why I do it. I go, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> I'm riding my bike, and I see a dead guy laying there. It looked like he was dead. He was laying there like dead. Now I feel like I'm a hardy boy, you, you know what I mean? In. Yeah, I turn, I immediately said I said so I tell her and she's like, Oh, okay. You know, she's like, Oh, I wouldn't do she's I would have run too. So I figure, okay. I go downstairs and I forgot Ratso was over my Ratso was waiting for me. You gotta see the car Ratso drives. Ratso really? told me he had a classic Eldorado and stuff, and I said, Boy, Ratso's into old cars and stuff and he probably has like one of these remodeled engines yeah. or anything. It's a it looks like a car that's just came out of a junkyard. It's an old Eldorado. And he's done absolutely nothing with it? And it's got Ratso license plate. Ratso. Oh, man. So I go downstairs and go, Ratso, what kind of car do you drive? He goes, isn't it fantastic? <laughs> I go, dude, I mean, you make a decent living. He hasn't done one thing to it. I said, I thought when you said you had a classic car, like you fixed it up or something. He goes, it's in perfect condition. Everyone who saw it was like, "Holy mackerel!" Yeah, get this away from my house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looked like yeah, it looked like Ratso if he was a car. <laughs> so anyway, I go downstairs and I start blurting my story out to Ratso, my assistant Laura, and uh, Ganji was over, and this guy Kevin, who was at my house too. I always have like tons of people. I can't stand people, but I have tons of people at my house. Don't so ask you make why. Make sure you don't like them. Yeah, so I was talking to Ratso and. I'm telling him the story and everything, and um, Ratso goes, aren't you going to call, like, aren't you, I told my wife, too, she was there in the room, she goes, So well, you're telling each of these people individually? No, no, I got them all in a group, and my wife says, aren't you going to call the cops? I go, if I call the cops, how am I going to explain where I found the body? She go, you, I go, you know I have no sense of direction. She goes, I'll make the call to the cops. I'll tell them where you found the body. I said, it's impossible. It's in the woods. <laughs> you don't even know where you were. Yeah, I don't know where. I said, I, I, I could find it again if I, you know, if I went back there. But I don't want to go back there with the cops. I'm busy. I got a ton of stuff to do. Oh, you're just so good for me. So my wife says, well, if you figure out where it was, I'll call the cops. I said, yeah. Then you're going to call the cops. Then I got to get in the car with the cops and go. Then they're going to want to speak to me. Forget it. I'm just, you know what, Allison, I'm telling you, I'm not going to do anything. So then I'm sitting there and I'm talking to Ranzo and we had, um, we were talking to, uh, we were talking to a bunch of guys we had to talk to and. The whole time I'm sitting there going, Jesus Christ, it's probably a dead guy laying. Maybe it was a kid and he's dying or something. I got to do something. So finally, I turned to Ratso. If the guy had about a few a few minutes to live yeah. before he died, mm. you just killed him. So I turned to Ratso. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and you know what? You're a big pussy too. You would have done the same exact <laughs> thing I did. Kill that you would, guy. If you were deep in the woods, you wouldn't do anything either. I'm you just big. you just killed him. Yeah, person. right. The guy's dead anyway. Anyway, like, I'm going to help him. I'm not going to give him out the mouth. So uh, I said to Ratso, okay, look, I can't take it anymore. Let's go back there. Let's go get a bunch of kitchen knives and stuff. Get all our weapons together. <laughs> we'll go into the woods, and we got to go see this guy. we got to go see what's going on. And if it's, a, if it's a maniac, at least we'll have our knives and stuff. And let's bring Ganji. Because Ganji's been taking karate. And he's Italian. And he's Italian. Right. Yeah. He's a bigger <laughs> pussy than anyone I know. So uh, we all pile in the car. My car, not Ratso's, because we never would have made it there. We all, now, we're, now we're like the, I said, we're like the Hardy Boys. <laughs> we're on a mission. I think you're more like Nancy Drew. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we were. I just couldn't think of her name. So me and Ratso and Ganji get in the car. And now I drive him over to the point in the woods where I entered. Uh -huh. We have our knives in our pockets. We've got our big kitchen knives. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. And we're ready to, you know, 
So we start sneaking into the woods, and we walk slow, and then I recognize the spot where once you turn this corner, this is it. Uh -huh. I go, look, I don't know what this guy is. I don't know what's going on, but I'll go, I'll go first. I did go first, oh, you did. and I said, and just back me up. Turn the corner, guy's still laying there. See the pants? I see he hasn't moved from that point. I start to step slower and so Ratso's behind me. <laughs> and give that some backup. I go, me, Ratso, Ratso goes, hey, Schmuck, it's a sleeping bag. Oh, you. It was a rolled up sleeping bag. It looked like a guy's pants and legs. I knew it. I was so embarrassed, man. <laughs> a sleeping bag, you went up there to attack. Yeah. We were standing there with dogs. It was a sleeping bag. Did you stab it? No, I just died of embarrassment. I said, can you imagine if I had called the cops? <laughs> oh, Where's my blooper uh, noise? <laughs> it was a sleeping bag. <laughs> Ratso standing there with a knife and Gangy. And, <laughs> and I was just like, Phew. at least I went back and sat for my career. But how could I not have seen that it was a sleeping bag? Oh. I was scared. running from a sleeping bag. You know bag. what it was? You were already scared because you were in the woods. <laughs> you're not kidding. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh man. man, you're oh, just a mess. So we got back in the car and I just said, no one's allowed to laugh or you're fired. Uh, oh, call the cops. You're just Can you imagine? If I called the cops, that would have been it. That would have been the best. Uh, yeah. If you snuck up there with the cops to see oh, a yeah. sleeping bag. What's a sleeping bag doing there? <laughs> it really did look like pants and... and uh... It was rolled up. No, it was un. It was not rolled up. Oh, it you was, said it was rolled up. No, I meant it was unrolled. Uh huh. And it was like just laying there, but it kind of looked like pants. I mean, you had to see it to believe it. It really did. Did they uh, also have this delusion that it no. was pants and a shirt? No, no, they were like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I felt like such a dick. They didn't laugh. I was already up. I'm, no, I was already up. Oh, they were. They were laughing. I made them stop though. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I made sure that I ended. I still be in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I didn't want to come out. The whole way back, everyone was like goofing on me. And I just told them, you're fired, you're yeah. fired. Just go live there now. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like a real dick. Very nice. But, you know, I learned something about myself. I learned I'm the biggest pussy on two feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the second I turned the corner on the bike and I saw anything that was laying there, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Because I once had one other weird experience when I went mountain biking. Because, I, I, you know, m that time of day, you can't find anybody to go with you, so you go yeah. yourself. So one time I was going, and I like to go, like, deep in the woods. Mm -hmm. So I'm going and going and going. Uh -uh. And all of a sudden I hear noise. I came up on a group of homeless guys. They were homeless guys, I think, and they had a big fire going. I said, oh, man, I ride back there. They're going to take my bike, beat me up, and cook me. <laughs> you know? Howard, you're in New York. You're not in Africa. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I just went, whoop, 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 whoop. And I got poor ass out of there. Oh, my goodness. You are too funny. I was telling the story the other day about the first time I realized this about you. Yeah. We were, you know, we were new to New York. Yeah. I didn't know anything. We were on our way into work, and we were in this car, and we stopped at a stoplight, and a guy with a hacksaw. No, we were not new to New York. This was just a couple of years ago. You don't even remember. <laughs> well, we saw a guy with a hacksaw. Walk up to a bike. No, no, no. Wait a second. What? You're telling it wrong. We okay. were in a car. Yes. We were sitting there. It was in my limo. Yes. Robin says, hey, look. There were some guys. There was a big hack, so they were stealing two bikes. It was one guy, Howard. All right. It was one guy. <laughs> All right. Thanks. And he was hack sawing through the thing. And right. there were tons there of people. This is a New York. Lock. We, weren't, we weren't alone. There was a tons of people in New York City doing this. Midday. It was a big black guy. All right. I don't remember yeah, what color yeah. he was. The guy, the guy looked like Mike Tyson, okay? <laughs> he didn't have a boxing career. He a scrawny little medicine yeah. type. Uh. You, you know what? You change the stories in your books. On this show, I tell the truth. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. So Robin says to me, what are you going to do about it? I said, what am I going to do about it? I said, what are you going to do no, about it? wait a minute. I said, Howard, look, he's stealing that bike. What are we going to do? Damn, what did I tell you? You said, we're going to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> what do I look like, a law officer? And keep our mouths shut. <laughs> right. And there were plenty of people on the street who could take care of us. A lot of brave guys who had nothing to live for. We had a radio show. A lot of people depend on us to make them laugh. Could have sworn the guy was Aaron Neville. Wow. Looked like him, too. I would have had Aaron Neville arrested. Anyway, uh, yeah. And believe me, you're just as big a pussy.
<laughs> just as big a pussy. One. I used to have a backbone. You know, the only other time something like that happened? What? <laughs> I took Robin with me to go clothes shopping because, let's face it, I'm a disaster when I go clothes shopping. <laughs> so I figured, you know, Robin, you know, always looks good and, like, she knows stuff about clothes. Like, let her dress me. So Robin goes, okay, I'll come with you and I'll see what you're doing because obviously you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so she goes in the store with me and we have a pretty good experience. We find some clothes that Robin thinks I look decent in. Because I wouldn't take my wife with me to go clothes shopping because we'd probably kill each other. Because, first of all, my wife doesn't know how to buy her clothes. She's a disaster. You know how girls know how to buy clothes? Yeah. My wife doesn't know how to buy clothes. <laughs> she comes home with stuff. It's, it's three sizes too short on her. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, it's awful. She was wearing a pair of jeans yesterday. I thought I was dating Mr. Green Jeans. <laughs> I, never saw, I never saw pants like this. I said, Allison, they look, they're totally too small for you. I mean, they, they look ridiculous. They look like you were coming out of the 60s with bell bottoms. <laughs> So anyway, I don't take her shopping with me. Plus, we, we get on each other's nerves. So Rob, so Robin came with me. We had a fun time. And then we're walking out of the store, and there's this woman laying on the ground. Oh, <laughs> she had fallen, and she couldn't get up. She was she was like about 35, 40. Not an old she bag. She was older. Actually, that. you're right. She might have been she about 55. Older. She might have been about 55, yeah. 60. Yeah. And I turned to Robin, and I go, oh, no. She goes, what's the matter? I go, look. There's some old bag laying there in the street. Aww. She just obviously fell. Now we got to go help her. Yeah, I'm like, you know, if we, we had just come out one minute later or one minute earlier, we would have been just in the car. The limo was two steps away. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, timing is everything. So I go, what do you think we should do? And I'm goes, well, you got to help her. I go, oh. I go over, are you all right? Um, she goes, she's just going like this. Uh, I fell down. I need some help. She's crying. So I pick her up. I almost break my back. I know my, my my testicles have never felt the same. I think I got a hernia from that day. I pick her up, right? And I, you know, she seems okay. And like she's like hobbling a little bit because she obviously her leg was bleeding. Her leg was bleeding. <laughs> and um, she says to me, uh, "Oh, is that car yours?" I go, "Yeah." Oh God, what am I gonna do? I have to get to uh, blah blah blah. And uh, meanwhile, it's completely out of all wound. <laughs> So she's like bleeding and everything, and I, and I said, listen, lady, are you okay now? You feeling all right? She goes, I wish, how am I going to get to, uh, and I said, I don't know how you're going to get there. I'm not going that way. And then what did we do? We got in the car and we left. We left her in the street. <laughs> she was fine. The guy at the clothing store, I told him to take care of her. He got in the car and he said, Robin, we would have been with her all day. Yeah, oh, she wasn't going to stop. Then she'd be like, I have to go see my sister. And once you let her in the car, man, she wasn't going to get out. <laughs> That's how you get a it was better that we left her. Yeah, I'm sure she, she's probably still hobbling around outside that store. That was like nine years ago. Yeah, I'm a real dick. Hey, anyway, I got to take a break. And uh, that was my exciting adventure yesterday. <laughs> well, I'm glad you actually went back. That's, that's yeah. progress. I finally decided to go outside. At, I just for 20 minutes, and all I know, I'm in the middle of a murder. Murder of a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I said, why can't I just leave the house for 20 minutes and then go home and have nothing eventful happen? Uh, well, nothing did. You yeah. blew it all out of proportion. <laughs> oh, you would have laughed your ass off. When, we saw, this, when we saw this sleeping bag, I was dying. <laughs> all right, we got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. I don't even feel like this is our last day of work before we go on vacation. Yeah. Some vacation. What are you doing? I don't want to talk about it. No. I'll tell you when I get back. <laughs> I'm going to be at my house. <laughs> Riding my bike. Discovering body. Robin, look out. Oh, that's your chair. Oh, my God. I thought your chair was attacking you. I thought it was a guy behind you. You know, the blue, it looked like a pair of jeans. Yeah. Look out, Robin, your chair. Oh, that is your chair. <laughs> You're like all worked up. It was like your stomach all jittery and stuff like that. And where's Ganji? He was there. Hey, Ganji. What I mean, when you rode back to the house, were you like... Tense. Jittery, tense. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw a dead body. First, I thought it was some kid in the woods laying down and smoking a dub. You know, like maybe hiding out from his parents. Ganji, when you turned the corner, did you know right away? Come on, be honest. Yeah, you no, did? I, I swear to God. You yeah. knew right away? Absolutely. It never looked like a body to you at all. No. But I could see his point if he's had prior experiences in this kind of neighborhood. Because it's, you know, it's like... It's like a jungle almost, you know, it's all woody. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you have prior experience... Yeah, you know what, though? It was three guys there, and we were walking. So if you were on your bike and quickly saw it out of the corner of your eye, you would yeah. see it look kind of Right, like exactly. It. Yeah, he's a big shot. Yeah. Meanwhile, look who I took with me, Mr. Karate. Uh, 
Well, he was going to protect you, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, sure. I was protected. He was way behind me. Hey, no way to be found. Didn't they go over and kick it? <laughs> yeah. I went over and kicked the sleeping bag to make sure. Yeah, you beat bad. it up pretty good. <laughs> he did. It. He did kick it. <laughs> I over did a karate kick on the sleeping bag. All right, get out of here. Right. That's enough of that embarrassing story. <laughs> Been a yeah, I should have oh, had a camera. Why didn't you video? Oh, you have it. that nice new video. Camera. It's in the middle of uh, saving someone's life. <laughs> you need video if you're gonna do something like that.